Hey everyone, just wanted to pop in here real quick to let you know I've made this video because I did put a poll up in my Facebook group as well as the YouTube community tab and many learners have expressed interest with the two octave C major arpeggio. That being said, keep in mind this is not for beginners. If you've only been playing for a few weeks, a few months, I wouldn't go into this right away. You could get frustrated. You can check it out because I am going to be teaching it slowly, but I have some other videos that can help you out and set you up straight. That's just important for me to say as an educator. Thank you. Let's begin the lesson. All right, here we go. Right hand first, C major arpeggio, two octaves. Here is what our hand shape will look like. We have our one finger on C, two finger on E, third finger on G. And I'm going to get into an important technique right away where all parts need to work together. Parts meaning our fingers, hands, wrist, forearm, elbow, and to keep the video short, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Third finger on G, play it. And now when we get to the C, our thumb needs to tuck underneath our hand, and as well as we are gliding over to the one. Gliding means that, did you see how the elbow, the arm is moving out? So some educators would say, think about floating above the keys, that can help, or gliding above the keys. This is what I have noticed as a teacher when we think just thumb underneath the hand. We play, we got it, but now we're twisting. And I'm bringing the thumb out more because I'm still holding on, we're twisting. And that creates some tension as well as you're not being aware on the alignment between the hand, the wrist, and the forearm. Let's start from the beginning. Third finger G, thumb tuck, moving. And just practice it a few times ascending. And I did say thumb tuck moving because in short, moving means all parts are moving, you're gliding. Your forearm is moving out. We're not over twisting. We're working together as one unit. We're meaning our body, <laughs> the forearm, elbow, wrist, hands. I'll try it again. Reset. Now let's go down. Talk. Oftentimes in music, it's great because we go, we think frontwards and backwards and everything else. Oftentimes, when we are descending, learners can have a hard time. So when I'm playing this high C, we might be tucking, but we're also just twisting. So we need to tuck and then we're bringing our forearm closer. Third finger. Let's try up and down. Tuck, moving. Tuck, moving. Loading, gliding, straight line, whatever you need to think of. That's really important. Let's try left hand. Hey guys, self plug here. If you don't mind, if you're getting value out of this video and my content, please go ahead and hit subscribe and the notification bell because it'll reach other awesome people like you. So I am gonna actually address one of the problem areas right away and we're gonna have our one finger on here. And when we get to this point of the arpeggio, we have to bring our forefinger all the way over. And again, many learners will over twist and they'll lock in their elbow. So what we wanna to try to do, there's a few different techniques, but the first basic would be one, and then our forefinger as we're tucking, the arm is also going out, four. And then after a while, you'll know where this four needs to land because we all are different in, far, in regards to finger links and whatnot. So I generally will play there, okay? I can just feel the keys. That will be later on. Let's go ahead and start way down here. Five finger on C, four finger on E, two finger on G, and then the one. Moving, tucking. Let's go and do that again. Here we go, five, four, two, moving and tucking. Try to avoid twisting. A lot of times newer learners will play and they'll do this at the one and then they'll overcompensate 
But that, see, already I had an accuracy issue here. Didn't plan on that, but that's proof in the pudding there. So let's try it ascending and then descending. Here we go. Five, four, two, one, moving and talking. Underneath. That motion feels a little easier. Let's try descending. Underneath, and then we have this. And you can slow it down like that. Just take a few seconds. You can go ahead and play nice and calm, thinking about moving, and then here, okay? We spend so much time just playing like this, so this is a whole other uh, element, if you will. All right, so hopefully that is helpful because now we are going to try both hands. But you gotta practice these hands separate first because if you don't, then when you try both hands, it's gonna get too confusing, you might get frustrated. So spend the time correctly, working on both hands, nice and slow, don't worry about speed. Think about the tucking and the moving. Okay, here we are, two octave C major arpeggio. Listen, if you haven't been practicing uh, because of busy life, I get it, definitely go back and review one hand at a time. It'll help you set yourself up for success. It'll be a, like a refresher. The other thing I want to bring up is if you have smaller hands, some learners do play with the five and then the three when we're playing the C arpeggio there. Want to keep that in mind, that might be able to help you. All right, so we're going to go ahead. The right hand's going to start here with the fingering that we did in the first two lessons. And now what we do is we only play part of the arpeggio and we want to focus first on the right hand going up. Here I go. Watch. And I wanted to exaggerate, that's why I cut that note earlier. So let's try that again. Third finger focusing and, and then reset. If we're ready and we're really comfortable, the next phase is right, focusing on the right, reset, and then the forefinger goes to the E. Here we go. And if you didn't get that, chances are you might have went too fast. So I've had learners even go like this. set. And if you are playing a bit out of time, but you're getting the coordination, you feel like you're getting that gliding movement, that is okay. Just be aware of that and you'll, in the next session or two, you can go ahead and try to play it in time. If you're really comfortable with that, we're going to finish the arpeggio. This is the ascending part only. Here we go. Focusing on the right. Focusing on the left. Resetting. Now let's go down. We are going to go down and focus first on the left. Here we go. Did you get that? Let's try it again. After you get comfortable with this, I definitely recommend practicing just descending. Sometimes we have a harder time thinking downwards. Here we go. Ready and. Now I'm going to play the whole thing up and down, slowly, ready, and. Back down, left, right. I'm going to demonstrate again because I am going to say right left and what that means is we are focusing on the right and that movement and then we're focusing on the left. This is a good trick to iron out your coordination issues too. All right, here we go. You can play with me if you want or just observe. Here I go and right focus, left focus. Watch how I reset too. Left focus, right focus. All right, the next pattern, which you don't have to do, it's easy at first and then maddening because there's one tricky part, is playing this um, instead of we're going parallel and now we're gonna try contrary motion. So the first part's fairly easy. 
We're gonna have our fingers set up correctly, and that's a good practice too. Just take your hands away, see how fast you can get to the fingers and the keys. First section, fingers are good. Try, and. Moving. Moving. That will take some time. Just make sure when you're doing it, you're understanding where the fingers are landing. And once you get past this basic step, we are gonna be thinking more about arm weight and bringing the hands in a bit more, but one step at a time. You know how you did, and if you are ready to check out these videos and get in some chordal playing, or perhaps even some scales, then check out these videos. Until next time, keep making music, take care.